Hawaii has a silent crisis. This crisis will continue to threaten everything that makes Hawaii the paradise everyone believes it to be. Consequently, Hawaii is considered the endangered species capital of the world. The remoteness of Hawaii contributes to being one of the most biodiverse places on the planet. Over 90% of Hawaii's native plants can't be found anywhere else on Earth. According to SEP, scientists estimated that up to 90% of native snails here are gone. And also, our native birds that once comprised of at least 113 endemic species, 71 of them no longer exist today. Hawaii's native flora and fauna are dying due to the introduction of invasive species. Since February is Hawaii Invasive Species Awareness Month, here are five invasive species out of many others that pose a significant threat to Hawaii. I only hope that this will bring awareness of this critical matter and encourage visitors and residents to take care of this special place before it's too late. Stick to the end of this video to hear what you can do to help save the unique gems that make up the beauty of Hawaii. Number 1. The Jackson Chameleon Hawaii is not home to any native reptiles, but this three-horned Jackson Chameleon came over to the Hawaiian Islands by a pet shop owner that had an agriculture permit to sell them in his shop. Unfortunately, while being with the pet shop owner, this reptile eventually made its way into the Kaneohe forest, where they continue to populate. They prey on native Hawaiian insects, native spiders, native birds, and even native snails. Growing up, I remembered my neighbor owned a pet Jackson Chameleon and I thought they were really cool with their clawed feet and textured eyes. It was when I started hiking, I learned that this reptile is detrimental to our native species. People who own these reptile pets would release them in the forest not knowing the consequence it would lead to. If you see them in the forest, I guess it's okay to take it in as a pet, but just don't release it back into the wild. Also, you can call the Reporting Invasive Species phone line 643-PEST or go to their website for further advice. Number 2, the Rosy Wolf Snail, aka the Native Snail Killer. Rosy Wolf is a cannibal snail and is the worst introduced predator to Hawaii. The rosy wolf which came from Florida was introduced to Hawaii in the 1950s to help get rid of the African snail which was a threat to people's gardens at home. However, the rosy wolf snail chose to go after the Hawaiian native snails over the African snail. It's one of the fastest moving snails up to 8 millimeters per second when it comes to hunting. 80% of their time is spent hunting other snails. They follow the slime trails to track down the others. Sadly, this carnivorous snail pushed the Acatinella genus onto the U.S. endangered species list. This vicious snail is considered one of the world's 100 worst invaders and is strongly linked to the extinction and decline of numerous snail species in every area where it has been introduced. Number 3. The Albizia Tree the Albizio trees can be seen anywhere on Oahu. You can see it in Kipapa Gulch, Manoa Valley, and even on the windward side. They were introduced in the early 1900s to help control erosion. They grow very fast, as much as 20 feet in the first year and then up to 150 to 200 feet in their lifetime. It's a threat to our native flora because they create a canopy that blocks the sun which denies our native flora the sunlight it needs to flourish. Albizia is also a very weak tree which can collapse all of a sudden. This has also been a problem in the residential areas by impacting city costs like to Hawaii Electric and the Hawaii State DOT who will need to clean up these fallen Albizia. Number 4 Strawberry Guava these dense trees that originated from Brazil are found on every ridge trail in Hawaii and is considered one of the most invasive species in the state next to the rosy wolf snail. Even though they provide a yummy snack, they're destructive to our Hawaii native forest because these trees easily choke out the forest and it grows aggressively. They create soil erosion and runoff affecting our watersheds, native flora, and native fauna. Strawberry guava only lets in 5% of sunlight into the native understory. Feral pigs play a big factor in spreading the seeds all over Malka. But thankfully, there is a biocontrol agent insect that has been providing natural control without threatening other plant species. 
It's just horrible that strawberry guava has been a threat to 90% of Hawaii's forests. Number 5. The Umbrella or Octopus Tree You'll see this tree almost everywhere in the forest, known for its red bumpy antennas and ring leaf formation that you can see from afar. It looks like a perfect tropical plant, but in reality it's invasive. This tree was introduced to Hawaii in the late 1800s. It's invasive because just like the albizia, it creates dense shade and canopy, inhibiting sunlight for native understory plant growth. This tree also spreads wildly. The tree roots are so strong that it can actually lift the sidewalk, so it's crucial to never have this in a residential area. And those are just some of the invasive threats to Hawaii. If you made it to the end of this video, thanks for sticking around this far. Now here are some things that you can do to help support and protect our native forests. One, always clean your hiking gear after a hike to get rid of any invasive seeds that has been stuck on your shoe, clothes, and backpack. My hiking friends and I always make it a habit to scrub our gear and then spray it with 70% based alcohol. 2. Volunteer with one of the many conservation organizations. I'll provide a list in the description below if you want to join. Not only will you be giving back to the land, but you'll be able to network with others passionate in Malama Aina as well as learning new conservation topics. And lastly, number 3. When traveling, keep in mind what you are bringing back to the islands. I hope this video gives you a different perspective on why we always need to complete that agricultural form prior to landing in Hawaii. You don't want to bring anything that can be a threat to our native flora and fauna. So this also means check what your shoes have been tracking during your length of your trip and even see what could have hopped in your luggage if it was a seed or critter that came along. If you enjoyed the information in this video, give it a thumbs up and drop some questions or conservation topics that you think would be great for sharing in future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you folks in the next one. Aloha!